Good morning, Floss Tube. I'm Misty Purcell. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks for checking me out. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back to hang out with me today. If you live in the United States, I hope that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, mine was very relaxing and um, I stitched and ate food that was really good and kind of hung out. I cleaned my house, which really needed to happen. Um, and did some puzzling and watched movies. So it was really just kind of a nice chill day. And I video chatted with my mom for a little bit. Um, I didn't think I said today is Saturday the 24th of November. Um, so if you watched my last video, you know that I was planning for my mom to come visit me right before Thanksgiving. And she called me a few days before she was going to come. And she said that her, um, the young woman who takes care of her goats when she's away had to go to the hospital and that she didn't think she was going to be able to come because she would need to round up a bunch of people on short notice and sometimes my aunt will fill in uh, but my aunt was sick and so she just thought well you know this this is just not meant to be this time so um she didn't end up coming uh and even if she had tried to come on thursday which was the plan we had a pretty bad snowstorm and she wouldn't have been able to come then anyway. So yeah, it just wasn't going to work, unfortunately, for her to visit this time. So we didn't get together and we just decided that uh, at Christmas we would spend more time together. So I've just been kind of adjusting my schedule accordingly. Um, so that was a, a bummer because I was looking forward to hanging out with my mom and, uh, you know, just kind of doing all the stuff that we usually do. But, you know, it's not as much of a bummer since I'll be seeing her in like a few weeks so if it were months and months it would be a huge huge disappointment but since it's just a few weeks I can I can wait a few more weeks so we tried to um, video chat on Thanksgiving and we we'd set this up I don't know maybe a year or two ago getting Skype on her computer and then we never use it but we had tested it and it had worked so I call her and I can't see anything she could see me I couldn't see her and she's even able to share the screen with me so that I could see what she needed to do on her computer and even when she would try to click on the video camera it just wouldn't work and we went into the settings and couldn't get it to work so it was like doing a floss tube video but weirder because in a floss tube video you're you're talking the whole time and you can see yourself but you're showing projects and um you're talking the whole time so you know, I would like listen, but all I could do is like look at me sitting there. <laughs> it was very weird. Um, so we'll be trying to fix the video chat so that we can video chat in the future and I can actually see her too. But it was a really nice Thanksgiving and I just decided to work really hard um, now so that I have more time to spend with her later. Um, I wanted to say thank you so much for all of the kind comments I received on uh, the release of my new design, Cardinal Noel. Um, I've been so enjoying seeing the uh, photos on Instagram of the stitch along, which started November 15th. And it's so cool seeing how people are using different fabrics or different flosses. Some people are doing back stitching around the letters and that looks really cool. Um, so it's just been such a, um, such a treat and I'm just, I'm so th grateful for all of you and, um, having had the opportunity to get to know so many people through the videos and through Instagram and I'm just really thankful for you and, uh, I enjoy getting to know you and I really appreciate all of you have taken the time to send me notes of encouragement or just to wish me happy Thanksgiving. So thank you so much for that. Um... So yeah, we ended up having Thursday before Thanksgiving um, a snowstorm coming, which I knew there was one coming and I knew that it could be bad weather and they kind of kept changing when the snow would start. So um, I was getting ready for class that morning. It was the last day of my class and class starts at 1035. And I usually leave about an hour before class starts just to make sure I have plenty of time to park and get to class. And I left even a little bit earlier because I needed to drop some orders to the post office. And so I don't have my phone audio turned on in the morning because I don't want to forget and then have people like text me or call me in the middle of class and have that go off. So 
I always just keep my phone silent in the morning. And the university had sent a message that there was going to be, that classes would be canceled at 11. And my class start, starts at 1035. So I get the message, and I happen to look at my phone right as I'm leaving the house. And I'm like, do I have to go in for a 25 minute class? And I wasn't sure what to do. <laughs> But I was already like on my way and I was like, well, are my students going to come? You know, even if I go, are they going to come? And so I just, I didn't know what to do, but I'm like, well, I have to go to the post office. So I'm just going to go to the post office and then I'll, I'll call my boss and ask what to do because I'll go. But I, you know, should I go? Is it worth going? So I get to the post office and I drop off the mail um, and I call my boss and she's like, well, since you're already on your way, just go ahead and go. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> But I was like, should I email my students and tell them to come? Because I don't know if they're going to come to class. And she's like, yeah, go ahead and email them and tell them to come. So we had to kind of rearrange the whole schedule because that was a new a new lesson that day um, that was being presented. And one class had met at like 9.05. And then two classes meet at 10.35, mine and another. And then the other classes meet after the time that classes would be canceled because the university was basically closing at 11. So... I get up to campus and I try to go into a classroom to like email my students and the computer won't start. So I have to go find another classroom and you know, it's not that far away from the time class starts and I email them and say, hey, please come to class. We will have a review today. And I already knew a few students weren't gonna come because the weather was bad and they were leaving early. They emailed me. So there's one guy waiting in the hall who's a student of mine. And for a while, we go into the, our classroom, for a while it's just he and I, and then eventually people kind of trickle in. I think I had seven people total, which was out of a class of 22. I thought it was actually pretty good. Um, so they, they were in a pretty good mood, and we just kind of chatted a little bit before class and then had a 25 minute review. And I didn't have, usually we teach um, classes with PowerPoints so that students have um, both audio and visual input in Spanish. Um, but I couldn't teach the lesson for the day, so I just did everything on the chalkboard and, and gave examples. So it was very old school, um, and we just reviewed indirect objects. <laughs> so we just did grammar, and then um, I adjusted the syllabus so that when we go back for, for class, we have to kind of change things up. We've got an exam coming up. This is going to be a big grading week for me. I've got video conversations to grade, which I'll probably start doing today. For my online class and then Monday I have students turning in essays revisions of essays for one class and then all three four of my classes have exams this week between like Wednesday and Friday so I have like 80 some exams to grade towards the end of the week and over the weekend so it's gonna be busy and then the following week is um oral exams for three of my classes and that's not a lot of grading outside of class because it's actually just done during class and I grade them at that time um, but I'll have a lot of grading to do just during class. So it should be an uh, interesting couple of weeks, but the semester is going to kind of speed up and then wind down quickly. Um, this week has been a really good break for me. I really needed, I mean, I like my students a lot. I have really great students this semester and I enjoy them, but I just kind of needed to have one less thing going for a week. So this, it's been really nice. Um... So, okay, I wanted to, I finally, because I had some free time, I got a, pretty much caught up with Floss Tube, like, as best as I could, and I even managed to watch someone new. And I was on Floss Tube, uh, or on YouTube, and I saw a recommendation for a uh, Yankee Creek Stitcher, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll watch her. And her name is Jerry. And I really enjoyed her. She's just super pleasant, uh, very friendly, and just kind of calming to listen to just feels like you're chatting with a friend and she um was showing some of the things that she'd purchased and they were definitely things that were on my wish list so i think she and i have very similar taste in um charts that we want to stitch so um she's also doing the tis the season cardinal stitch along and hers looks beautiful i think she was stitching it on kind of a brownish or well i think she said it was the called for which i think is pear but it looked kind of brown in the picture so i don't know if that was just the lighting but it looked nice on her fabric. Um, and she also did this Halloween piece that was so cool. It had like spider webs on it. 
and then she'd finished it on this pumpkin and it was just so so adorable and she'd used kind of a check or a gingham background fabric for it that it was mounted on and it was really nice um and she also had stitched a piece from the santas and snowmen book that i'm um working from as well so that was cool to see she did a different design than i did um so i was listening to her and i was stitching along and then she mentioned me and i was like oh <laughs> And I didn't realize that um, I sort of knew her from my Etsy shop, so that was pretty cool. Um, but please check out Jerry Yankee Creek Stitcher. I'll link her below in the notes. And again, she's just super cool, really nice to listen to, and has a bunch of cool projects. She's also a quilter in addition to being a stitcher, and I think she does some sewing too, so she has diverse interests. She has a really neat um, Christmas Bargello quilt on the wall behind her in one of her more recent videos that was neat to see. I haven't done Bargello, but uh, it looked really cool. Um, okay, so that was shout outs and I have one finish. Hey. So speaking of Santas and snowmen, you may recall that I was stitching the Santa last time. So I finished him. He's so cute and tiny. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It wants to be blurry if I get too close, I guess. It's just the way. But I'm super happy with him. I didn't do like every single little snowflake in there because some of them just weren't showing up that much and I thought it really didn't matter. He was so tiny, no one's gonna care. So my plan for Tiny Santa is I would like to do um, kind of the tag finish that Vanna has a tutorial for. So I have secured a crocodile to do the eyelet um, and I was auditioning some fabrics that could possibly work for me to mount this on. I have a ticking, a red and kind of cream ticking that I think could work. My only hesitation with that might be that the stripes might be so big that scale wise this might not look right on it. I have a green that goes with this green but I'm not, and the print's nice, but I'm not sure I'm crazy about it. So I might be looking for a different small scale tone on tone red print, I'm not sure. Or maybe a red and white dot or something that's very small. Um, so I'm mulling my options, but I think this could be a finish in the near future and it better be because uh, the Christmas party where I will be exchanging this is coming up um, mid-December. So I need, to, I need to get cracking. I have several things that just need to be finished some gifts um, I just need a little bit more time to get them done so I'm super happy about tiny Santa um, so that was my one finish oh by the way I stitched that one over one and this is mystery Lugana that was in my stash I didn't change any of the floss colors I just used what was called for so uh, this was just kind of a fun little stitch and once I get this finished, fully finished, I'll decide if I want to do more um, tiny ones as a collection for me or if I'm going to do the regular size. So I think this is a project perhaps for the next decade, but <laughs> I'd like to stitch most of them and display them somewhere, whether it's on my tree or on my little window with the branch above it. I'm not sure, but one or one or the other, I want, I want to do more of these. Okay. Um, I had a new start, so I had kind of a rough day this one day where I was teaching and my students just did not understand what we were doing and we were talking about stuff in the past tense and they didn't even know we were doing the past tense and it was just, it was just a rough day and I was having one of those days where I'm like, am I a terrible teacher? Why don't they understand what's going on? And so I needed some retail therapy. And I'd seen, um, I'd seen people, I, I'd seen, I'd wanted this chart ever since it uh, was released, which I think it was 2014. Yeah, so four years. Um, I wanted this chart ever since it was released. And um, then lately people, stitchers had been getting out their ornaments and showing them on Instagram and several people had this. And I was like, oh, I really want that. I'm like, I don't really have time to stitch it, but I want it. So um, I went to, uh, Jen Stitching Niche on Etsy and I was like, I just have to have it today. I'm having a bad day and I need a chart. 
So I ordered it from her and of course she shipped it right away because she's very fast with her shipping and she sent a, um, a gift chart as well. So thank you, Jen. That was so nice. And she included a little note. So that made me happy to get this in the mail. And then I just decided to start it right away. Um, because I couldn't help myself. Even though I don't really have time to stitch this right now, I just was like, whatever, I'm doing it. <laughs> so <laughs> for what it's worth, for better or worse, I started it. So I am stitching this on my, and this isn't really great lighting, so it's more pink than it shows, but I'm stitching this on my sweet pink linen. Yeah, it's very faded looking in this picture, but it's more intense in person. Uh, I'm using the called for, which was eggshell by Classic Color Works. <laughs> so I screwed up the border right up here. And, but I thought I only did, like did one little thing. I didn't realize like the extent to which I screwed it up. And then everything was going fine and I'd stitched about to the middle on the bottom and then it was off and I could tell right away. And then I was like, I don't even know where this is off. And I got mad and I threw it in the trash. <laughs> and then I like sat for a bit and thought about it. And I was like, okay, well, if it's something where you don't have to pull out much, then it's worth fixing. So I figured out that, yeah, I'd, I, I could see where I'd screwed up here after I looked at it for a bit. And that if I just took out, you know, to about here and then duplicated what I did up here, it should be fine. So then I calmly, but irritatedly took out my stitching and now I'm back almost to where I was before. And I'm just gonna make it work somehow cause I'm not taking it out again, dang it. <laughs> so I'm subbing a couple of colors there. Um, Red is a little bit oranger, and I actually really like that color, but I think for this fabric it needs to be just a little bit bluer. So I'm gonna use um, Classic Color Works Cupid for the red, and Bramble Bush for the uh, branch, the brown. Some of them I just don't have in my stash, and some of them I thought would look a little bit better on my fabric in a different colorway. And then um, for the green, I'm using, I think I'm gonna use Weeks Blue Spruce. So hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe I'll have this done the next time you see me. That would be awesome. I do like having, even though I have problems stitching in hand, because if I do it too long, it, it bothers my hands. I like having a small project I can stitch in hand that doesn't require my scroll rods and my stand and my equipment. It's just kind of nice to have something that only takes a few colors and is low maintenance. And when I stitch with my... Um, stand I have to sit on the other side of the couch which is fine but I like my it's just easy to sit on my normal side and have my my tv or my um what's that thing called it's like a tv stand it's not the right word whatever a stand next to my couch <laughs> uh anyway then my coffee can be there and everything's really convenient so I like sitting on that side but I can only do that if I'm either using my lap stand or stitching in hand so anyway I'm stitching in hand on that one Um, so that was my new start. And then uh, I'm still working on Happy Christmas and I am happy about Happy Christmas. It's awesome. So uh, I'm stitching this with Helen and then joining us are Frankie Easter and Heather McLean and Carla Mick on Instagram. Hope I'm not forgetting anyone. Um, this chart is out of print. And there was a lot of sorrow on Instagram about that. So I emailed Hoffman and asked them if they will be reprinting this. And they said, yes, they don't know when. So whenever they reprint this, I'll get some copies for you in my shop so that you can stitch it too. She said, hopefully soon, but you know, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, but, but rest assured, they will reprint it. So you, you can have this in the, I'm sure, not so distant future. So I was working across the top. I finished the top and then I've made it down to here. So I'm going to have to insert a picture of the top part of it because I'm on a scroll rod and I've already scrolled up and it's not easy to show you the whole thing because it's just a long piece. So I'm going to insert a picture here of where I was. And then I'll show you where I'm at now. Let me get this. Ooh, boy, that light. Ugh. Okay. Maybe if I angle it. 
It really wants to shine. Um, so I got the squirrel and I've changed his color. I've actually changed a lot of the colors. So the red is, I think, uh, so I didn't bother to note. Here, let me look. I'm not gonna know. Never mind. Okay. So 347, I think, is the red that I'm using. 435, 927, and 400. So 400 is the squirrel. I was gonna do the squirrel in orange, but he just wasn't working. I thought he was too orange. So this is kind of a brownish orange. And then I changed the red of the houses. I changed the brown on the houses. And then I made the smoke. That's the 927. I made the smoke instead of gray, I made it blue. So I think 435 would be the, yeah, should be the brown on the houses. 347 I think is the red. Um, I'm loving this. It's super fun to stitch. I even enjoyed stitching that tree. I, it makes me so happy stitching this. One thing that I did that I didn't, I, right after I showed this on the last video, I don't know what is my problem. I'm like, oh, I have a little extra. I'll just turn it this way and save some fabric. And then I didn't leave myself enough here to lock in well. And so my stitches weren't looking good because my fabric was too loose because it kept kind of slipping out of the scroll rod because I am re really not thinking about <laughs> how much fabric I actually need to use a scroll rod. Um, so I was like, am I going to start over? This was like way back a while ago. And then I realized that I could just sew another piece of like fabric to it and then I'd have enough fabric. So that's what I did. I ended up taking some leftover scraps and sewing them together and it's working out okay. At least it gives me the, the much, much more taut um, fabric. Can you hear it snowing or ice, rain. I'm not sure what's coming down out there. It's a gloomy day here in central Pennsylvania. So um, this is awesome. I love it. I'm so happy I'm stitching it and I'm going to keep going. And maybe if I'm really good, I'll get it done somewhere around Christmas because you know what's coming up soon. Um, button up. So before I talk about plans and button up, I want to talk about some things from the archives. I had three things, but then I put one thing away. So, and I haven't even got my Christmas tree up. I got all my decorations here and then on the sides up, oh, but I didn't get the tree up yet. And I'm hoping that I get the tree up still this year. Um, I want to at least have like the tree lit, even if there's no ornaments on it. But I've just been so busy that it's been a struggle to get more done. So I'll show you two things. I'm going to insert a photo here of the tiny knit garland that you may remember from forever ago that I've been knitting most of this year or half of this year plus last year. Um, I put that on the window that I showed you in my, I think it was my last video. Um, so I'm going to insert a picture here of what that looks like. And then, um, so that was a free pattern or a series of free patterns from Just Crafty Enough. And I'll link that below in case you feel compelled to knit yourself any of the tiny sweaters, hats, stockings, etc. Um, I really like how it looks up there. So I have another place that I could also display it if I feel like changing it around in different years. But I kind of liked it up there for now, especially since I don't have um, anything hanging from the window at this time. Um... So the other thing I wanted to show you is a couple of years ago, Wegmans is our one of our local grocery stores. I mean, it's not only local here, but it's one of the grocery stores we have here. <clears throat> so Wegmans had these sleds with greenery and these tiny mittens on them that were so cute. And I wanted them, one, so badly. And they were like $25, which I didn't really feel like spending. So when my mom came to visit, I showed it to her and she's like, well, why don't we just try to make that? And I was like, okay. So a couple of years ago, we, we went to Joann's and found a sled. And then we went to the, there's a um, plant nursery in town called College Gardens that does like a huge Christmas display. So if you're ever uh, in State College area around Christmas from like, Honestly, even around Halloween, they'll have Christmas stuff up, but they 
by like early November they have a huge I mean it's just like a Christmas land trees decorated it's amazing so we went there and got um, some greenery and had um, the nice lady there make me a bow for my sled because I didn't know how to make bows and I didn't feel like taking the time to learn at that time and then um, I found a knitting pattern for mittens that I liked and I picked some yarn that I had and I I think I think I had to tweak the pattern to get the scale right um, I'd have to look at my Ravelry notes but anyway I knit some mittens and hung it on there and it looked awesome so I'm so this is like one of my favorite decorations that I get out every year since that time so I'm gonna insert I think I have a picture of what the original sled looked like that was at Wegman so I'll insert that here and then I'll show you my sled so you can see the welcome gets a little bit covered up but I don't care so yeah this is a sled that I found like I said a couple years ago at Joann's and it was sparkly like this I didn't change the sled at all um, then they made me the bow and this is um, wired ribbon so you know I just fluff it up every year and then I would found this greenery and then I found these bells and the bells were perfect and then I knitted the mittens and you know they're they're a little bit bigger maybe than um, well they're bigger than what the originals were but I like them and I love this sweet little pattern I think that is so cute and I actually knit myself a pair of pop top mittens with this pattern on them too because I just liked it so much so I love this and um, sometimes I hang it on my door. Right now I've got it leaning up against um, a table. Like in my living room as a display. So it's super cute and of course it, it jingles. I love it. And I like the sound of the jingle. It's a nice, a nice bell. So I'm super happy with this and I love getting it out every year. So in the end, I probably spent more money creating my own version than if I had just bought the one at Wegmans, but I like mine better. So it, it, it worked out well in the end. Um, okay, so now I'll get to my plans. And uh, one of them, of course, is the button-up sale starting Christmas Day. So please join us. The hashtag is button-up sale. And um, I'm hosting this with... Helen D and with Amy of Amy Loves Toads. So we'll be sharing our progress here on FlossTube and on Instagram. So please join us if you'd like to. Such an adorable pattern. And I have more copies in my shop if you need to pick up a copy. One thing I wanted to mention that um, Melanie had pointed out to me. So thanks, Melanie. Melanie had contacted me to say that in the original printing, there was an error on the stitch count and they uh, preserved that error. Um, so the stitch count that's printed on this is not correct. So I counted like three times, thrice, and I got 102 high by 114 wide. It's narrower um, printed in the pattern. It's more like a sampler size, I think what their traditional sampler size is. So just so you know, uh, double check your count, double check, make sure you have the fabric that's the right size. Um, so I'm super excited about this. If you watched Amy's video recently, she was like, they could have reprinted it on a cocktail napkin and I'd have been happy. Uh, which I thought was very cute. You could just feel her enthusiasm. Um, and I know some other people have said that they'll be stitching along with us. So I'm very excited for this to start. You can see that this is a pretty, uh, full coverage piece in a sense, especially for like a prairie schooler. So, um, you know, this is going to be a lot of stitching and I don't expect to finish it anytime soon. I'll probably be stitching it into the summer realistically, but I'm going to enjoy every stitch. So uh, I have plans for that and I'm going to talk about that a bit more in just a second because I have fabric. Uh, the other thing that I want to stitch is January. So in January, shockingly, I will be starting January and I'm going to stitch, for now I'm going to stitch this sampler for my window. Um, I think I'm going to change the lettering to say winter. So instead of saying January brings the snow, makes your feet and fingers glow, I'm going to change it to winter. And maybe I'll take another snowflake and put it here. I'll have to kind of play around with it, but that's what I'm thinking right now so that I don't have to change it until spring. 
then I can leave it up for longer. So I'm super excited about stitching this, so um, I'll be doing that. And I have um, a couple copies kind of transitioning to, well, this is kind of all over the place, transitioning to my shop briefly. I have a couple copies of this in case you also need to stitch it. And this is the original cardstock printing, whereas the button up is a reprint. I have a couple copies of this and I have, because it was so cute and I had to get a couple for you guys too. So there's a couple copies of this in my shop as well. Um, okay, so going back to, or now going to haul and then going to my shop. <laughs> so uh, in addition to purchasing Seasons Greetings, I was watching Helen and Helen gets me into all kinds of trouble. So Helen showed this, I think she'd gotten this on Stash Unloading or Stash Unload or one of those groups. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just love the whimsy. I love the reindeer especially. And I was like, I need that in my life. So I went on eBay and I found it for like a really reasonable price and ordered it from someone in Pennsylvania. Even came with the beads. So that was awesome. Um, so I was really happy to get that. And then, um, Barbie, uh, she's Barbie's pedal pusher on, um, Etsy and on Instagram. And she has a floss tube channel. She designs and she does beautiful work. She just released a new design, uh, Peace on Earth. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to have that. I was watching her video and I'm like, I don't even want to wait to like enter this giveaway. I just want it now. So, um, I had to purchase it and I don't know which version because she has like a, a calm and a bright version. I like them both. So I'm not sure which one I will stitch. I'll insert a photo of that here so that you can see her beautiful design and I'll link it so that if you want to get yourself a copy that you can. I think she's having a sale this weekend. Um, okay, so that was my haul and now on to my shop. So I'm super excited because I have some awesome fabrics for you that I think would look really good for button up. Um, so I want to mention a couple things first and I'll talk about that. So first thing is this is going to be, I decided that after my mom couldn't visit that we would spend more time together at Christmas. And that means that between all the grading I have to do and family visits, the holidays, that I just don't have time to do a second update like I had planned to do in December. but So this is going to be my only update until 2019. This is my last one. So I dyed like as much fabric as I possibly could, the most I have ever done, to try and like fill the shop to make sure people could get what they needed um, before the holidays because uh, I just can't quite squeeze anything else in. Um, so I'm sorry that I can't do another update, but I tried to do basically like a double update because of that. So there should be uh, a good quantity of fabric in the shop for you. Um, and so I will, um, be taking orders, um, like you can purchase things up through, uh, Saturday, December 15th. That'll be like my last shipping day. So even though I won't have like more updates, the shop will be open. And, um, then after that, I'll change it so that just digital items are available so that you can still purchase pattern downloads if you want. Um, so I won't close the shop at all, but I'll just take down physical things when I'm not able to ship. And then that will be until Friday, December 28th. So from Sunday the 16th to Friday the, to Thursday the 27th, there'll just be digital items available. And then Friday the 28th, I'll repost everything that's physical back into the shop. And then my next update will probably be, uh, mid, early to mid January. Um, and then it gives me a little bit more time too to work on a couple of designs I have in the works and um, that I'm hoping to be releasing around that time too. So um, one other thing I wanted to mention, just another little housekeeping thing. If you comment on your purchase and you purchase something digital, I often don't see that. So what happens is on Etsy when you buy something, if you put a comment there and you've purchased something that I have to ship, then when I print your packing slip, I see the note. Um, <clears throat> but Essie doesn't message me. Essie shows me that you bought something, but it's not like glaringly obvious if you comment and you bought something digital. So if you buy something digital 
sometimes the only way I know that you commented is by scrolling through all of my orders and just happen happening to see it, which is what happened recently where someone had asked about fabric and I didn't even see their comment until this morning. And that was like, I don't know, almost two weeks ago. And I feel really bad. So I try to keep a, an eye out for that. Um, but that one just slipped by me. If you send me a private message, uh, then I see it for sure because they send me an email letting me know that someone sent me a message. But if you comment, it just kind of goes in with your order. Um, and I don't necessarily see it. So I, I try to be more aware of that myself. And I just wanted you to know, like, I'm never ignoring you. Um, I never intentionally miss any comment that you make. So if you want to hear back from me and you don't, then that, um, maybe use the private message to get a hold of me. And yeah, like I said, I'll try to watch more for that. I just, uh, that one just snuck by me. And I do try to scroll through the orders and just make sure I'm not missing anything, but this time I did. Um, so just wanted to mention that. And also if you purchase a digital download and you try to download it on your phone, I don't know if this is true of tablets, but it won't work on phones. So um, for whatever reason, Etsy has it set up that you can't. And I've tried to even like other people's patterns that I've bought. If I wanted to download it to my phone just to see what I needed, you can't do it. I don't know if you can do it on a tablet because I haven't tried that, but I just wanted to let you know. Um, it works on computers for sure. It might work on tablets, but it doesn't so far anyway work at least on um, iPhones. So just an FYI. If you have trouble ever accessing a download, just get a hold of me, please. Uh, I want to make sure you get your pattern. Okay, finally, on to the fabric at last. <laughs> okay, so I dyed two different colorways that I think would look really nice with button up. One is kind of an obvious cream color that's similar somewhat to what um, was used in the original model and um, the other is more of a wintry color. So the two colors that I dyed, I'm inserting a lot of photos in this video, I hope I remember them all. Um, I dyed Snow Day. This is not super accurate but you're sort of getting the sense. It's a gray with kind of a cool blue color and it's gonna look really pretty. Uh, I'm gonna insert a photo here of the fabric with the floss on it so that you can see what it looks like. And I think it's going to <clears throat> soften the floss colors a bit and just be a little bit more subdued. So if you're kind of someone who likes a little bit more of a subdued look, um, I think that's what the effect will be of the fabric with the floss. So I have Snow Day. In all of the bases, it dyes up a bit lighter in the 18 count Ada and in Lugana, it dyes up a little bit less blue. I tried to go through and put notes on that in Etsy so that you know that. And um, if there was any difference in the DMC equivalent be because those bases looked a little different, then I noted that too. So I just listed the DMC equivalents and added or took away as needed. I love this color. I think this would look really good on, um, also if you're trying to stitch something that was kind of water themed, um, or I was thinking, um, this is water themed too, there's um, a Cricut collection, I think it's Skeleton Crew, I have that design and I was thinking this might look really cool with that. So, Snow Day. The other color that I did, which as I said is more of a cream color, is called Macchiato. And not a great accurate picture here. I'll insert a photo of Macchiato and then a picture of it with the floss on it so you can see what it looks like. So this is going to be very similar <clears throat> to the pattern and I think it's going to warm up the colors. To me, when I look at the pattern, uh, it sort of looks like in some of the views, it's like the sun setting kind of and the kids playing outside in the in the sun setting. So I think you're going to get that look with this and I think it looks really nice too. So I have not been able to decide wh which one I'm going to use. I don't know. I took a piece of each for myself and I just figured I will agonize until Christmas Eve perhaps. <laughs> I don't know which one I'm going to pick. Um, I'm, it's tempting to go with this one and then maybe use this one for January, but I, I don't know. I just can't decide. I'm going to stitch it on 32 count. So um, it calls for the 
they use 32 count as well. 32 count lambs will. But you could stitch it on any count. And I've included four Ada stitchers fat quarters of these colors in my shop so that your piece should be big enough for whichever color you want. Um, yeah, so I love these fabrics. I think they're great colors just generally. And I think they'll be really pretty for this. So uh, hopefully something here will work out for you if you're looking for fabric. Um, and then I also have back in stock more of covered in uh, scraps of this. Okay, so this is um, Midnight, which is what I'm using for Happy Christmas. I've got more mint green back in stock. I've got floss packs for Cardinal Noel, and I have print copies of Cardinal Noel in stock. I have print copies of Button Up in stock. And I have faded denim, which I had kind of a limited quantity last time. I dyed more this time. And this is a great blue, just like a really pretty soft blue. Also, if you have um, soft porcelain, I think that could be a really nice color for button up. So if you already have that, that would be another one that you could use, I think, that would look good. Um, okay, so I think that's it for the shop talk and um, kind of it for me in general at the moment. I'll be back in probably three weeks, maybe two weeks if I get a lot done, but most likely three weeks with a video. And even when my shop is, you know, just down to like digital stuff, you can contact me. I mean, you can contact me anytime and I'll, I'll get back to you. So it's not like I'm going away or anything. I'm, I'll be around all over the place on Instagram and Facebook and, you know, so I'm around. So please don't hesitate to get in touch if you need something or you have a question. And so I will see you in a few weeks. Um, again, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great few weeks. I hope you get lots of stitching in. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.